Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. In today's tutorial, we're making a sporty hooded vest. The vibe for this design was modern athletic, so we came with ribbing and a shape that flatters the waist and a large pocket to fit all the things. Speaking of, if you're into all things crochet, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of the best modern crochet tutorials and patterns with more dropping weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado. For this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 300 grams of yarn, and that's 675 yards if you're stateside, and the individual measurements will be on the screen. As for tools, a 6mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us if you prefer regular or mini golf. I love mini golf. It was actually one of my favorite activities to do as a kid. Details for the giveaway down below. We are using five stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. Half double crochet. Double crochet. And Trinity Stitch. This tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our primary color, Category 4 yarn, and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 6mm hook, and we are all going to start by making a chain that starts 1 inch underneath our underarm, down to our waist. I need roughly 8 inches or 20 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain 30. Now that we have our chain, we're all going to block off that last chain and do a chain 2. That chain 2 does not count as a stitch, that's our turning chain, and we're all going to start this row off with an increase of 3 half double crochets. So all that is, is 3 half double crochets into the first chain. So yarn over. And into the chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, we're going to insert with our first half double, so insert, Yarn over, pull through one for three loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through three, and two more into that same chain. So yarn over, into that same chain, pull through one, yarn over, pull through three, and once more, yarn over, into that same chain, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. From here, we're going to put one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. So from here, yarn over, into that following chain, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, and once more, yarn over into that following chain, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. Continue with one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. Alright, so we are back. We have put one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one, and into the last one we're now going to do an increase of two half doubles. So yarn over into that last chain with one half double, and then into that same last chain with a second half double, and now our row 1 is almost complete, we just want to make sure that we're inserting a stitch marker into the increase of 3 end of this row, so the beginning of this row, and that's just so that we know where the bottom of this piece is going to be. But once we have that into place, we are going to chain 2 and flip our work to get started on our row 2. Now for this underarm portion, along the top of our piece, we're always going to be doing an increase of 2 back loop half double crochets now, so yarn over. Into that first stitch's back loop, we're going to insert with one half double, and then into that same stitch's back loop with a second half double. And then from here, one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way down. So for every even number row, we're going to start that row off with an increase of two back loop half doubles, and then one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. We've made our way down with our row two. Now just to get started on our row 3, it's basically going to be a repeat of our row 1, but now within the back loops. So we're going to chain 2 and flip our work. 
So for every odd number row, we are always going to start the row off with an increase of three back loop half doubles. So yarn over into that first stitches back loop with one, same stitches back loop with our second, same stitches back loop with our third back loop half double crochet. Then one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, and then into the last stitch into this row, an increase of two back loop half doubles. I'll meet you back when we have one stitch left to do that increase together. We are back. We have put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving that last one. And now we're gonna do an increase of two back loop half doubles together. So yarn over into that last stitch's back loop, insert with one, and then insert with a second half double crochet, and that's it. From here, we're gonna continue to repeat our two previous rows until we have an underarm portion that can reach from mid underarm over to the front of our body, roughly around where a bra strap or a tank top strap would be. I'll meet you back right after an odd number row, so along the top, and then we can get started on the shoulder from there. I am back and my underarm is complete. I have a total of seven rows. My width is roughly three inches or 17 centimeters. And now what we're going to do from here is our shoulder. So since we all should have ended along the top, we're all going to make a chain that reaches the top of our shoulder. So I have already made my chain. I needed roughly four inches or 10 centimeters. So I made a chain of 15. Now what we're gonna do from here is another half double crochet row. So once we have our chain, we're all going to block off that last chain and do a chain two. Now into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook, yarn over into that third chain or the chain that we blocked off, insert with one half double crochet. And from here, we're gonna put one half double crochet into every chain, then one back loop half double crochet into every stitch till we reach the end of the row. Since this is an even number row, we aren't gonna do any increases or decreases. We have made our way down with our first shoulder row and now we're at the bottom. Now all we're gonna do from here is get started on the following row, then it's gonna be a repeat. So since our following row is an odd number row, it is going to start with an increase of three back loop half doubles. So chain two and flip. Then start this row off with an increase of three back loop half doubles. So there's one, there's two, and then there is three back loop half doubles all into that same first stitch. Then from here, one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way up. We're not gonna be doing any increases or decreases along the top since this is our shoulder. So from here, we're just gonna continue to repeat our two previous rows until we have a shoulder portion that can reach the side of our neck. When we have that, I will meet you back right after an even number row or along the bottom so we can get started on the neckline together from there. All right, we are back. I have just finished up my shoulder portion. I now have a total of 14 rows. My width is now five and a half inches or 14 centimeters. And now we're gonna get started on our neckline. So first things first, we're gonna put this piece up to ourselves and we're going to insert our stitch marker into any stitch from the top that's nearest to the base of our neck. Now I inserted my stitch marker into the 14th stitch from the top. That's roughly four inches or 10 centimeters. Now from here, we're gonna get started with our first neckline row. But for the neckline, we are no longer gonna start every odd number row off with an increase. So since we're along the bottom, let's all chain two and flip our work. We're all gonna yarn over and insert our hook into that first stitch with just one back loop half double crochet. So basically along the bottom of only the neckline portion, it is going to be blunt. From here, continue with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch until we are two stitches away from our stitch marker stitch. All right, so we've made our way all the way back up with our back loop half doubles, leaving two stitches right before our stitch marker. And now we're gonna do a decrease of two back loop half doubles. So yarn over. Into that second to last back loop, pull through. Into that last back loop, pull through for four loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through all four. Then our following row is gonna start off with a decrease of two back loop half doubles as well. So chain two and flip. Now to do our decrease again, yarn over, into that first stitch's back loop, pull through, next stitch's back loop, pull through, pull through all four, then one back loop half double crochet into every single stitch. At the end of the row, chain two, flip your work, and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last two stitches, so we can do our decrease together just once more. All right, so we are back. We have finished up our second neckline row, and then also made our way up 
with our third neckline row just by putting one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. Leaving the last two, we're going to do another decrease of two back loop half doubles. So all together, we're gonna yarn over and insert our hook into that second to last back loop, pull through, last back loop, pull through, pull through all four. And from here, we're gonna continue to repeat our two previous rows until we have a portion that can now reach over to mid chest. And I'll meet you back right after an odd number row, so along the top, so we can do our middle row and then mirror everything we did here on the other side of our front panel. I am back with the first portion of my neckline. I now have a total of 19 rows and my width is roughly seven inches or 18 centimeters. Now we're all gonna get started with our middle row. So from where we're at, let's all chain two and flip our work. From here, just make your way down with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch and that is going to be our middle row. But we do wanna make sure that we're inserting a stitch marker into the top of this row just so we know where the middle is. But once we reach the end of this row, we're gonna get started on the other side of our neckline. So chain two, flip our work and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last stitch and then we can do an increase together from there. All right, so our middle row is complete. At the end of that row, we all did a chain two, flipped our work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving that last stitch, and now we're all gonna do an increase of two back loop half doubles. So yarn over into that last back loop, insert with one, and then with our second back loop half double. Then to get started on the following row, chain two and flip. We're all gonna start this row off with an increase of two back loop half doubles as well. So there's one, there's two back loop half doubles into that first stitch. Then from here, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. Now all we're gonna do is continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of rows as the decrease portion of our neckline, making sure that we are not including that middle row. Once we have the same amount of rows, I'll meet you guys back so we can get started on the shoulder portion. All right, so we are back. The increase side of our neckline is complete. Now we're gonna get started on the shoulder. So what we're all gonna do, since we all should have ended along the top, is we're all gonna start by making a chain, I already have mine finished, of the same amount of stitches that we skipped when we got started on our neckline. So for those of you that have my numbers, I skipped a total of 14 stitches, that's where I inserted my stitch marker. So along this side, make your number of chains. Then we're going to do our half double crochet row down. So once we have our chain, block off that last chain and do a chain two. That chain two does not count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. Then from here, yarn over, insert your hook into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook, pull through, pull through three, and continue with one half double crochet into every chain, then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch and I'll meet you back at the end of the row. So our first shoulder row is complete. Now working our way back up, we're gonna start our falling row off with a decrease of three back loop half double crochets to mirror this side that we have over here. So from where we're at, let's all chain two and flip our work. So start with the yarn over. Insert your hook into that first stitch's back loop, pull through, next stitch's back loop, pull through, and next stitch's back loop, pull through for one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all five, then one back loop half double crochet into the rest of our stitches. All we're gonna do from here is continue to repeat our two previous rows. So a back loop half double crochet row, making our way all the way down with no increases and no decreases. Then a half double crochet row that starts with a decrease of three back loop half doubles until we have the same amount of rows as our first shoulder portion. Once we do, I'll meet you back so we can get started on our underarm. I am back. I have just finished up my second shoulder portion. I now have a total width of 12 inches or 30 centimeters and now we're going to finish up with our underarm. So first things first, we're all going to need to insert our stitch marker into the same amount of chains that led up to our shoulders. So for those of you that have my numbers, I made a chain of 15 here. So on this side, counting from the top, I inserted my stitch marker into the 15th stitch. Now from here, since we all should have ended along the bottom, we're gonna get started on our following row. So chain two, flip your work, start the following row off with a decrease of three back loop half doubles and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last two stitches right before our stitch marker stitch. I've made my way all the way up with my first underarm row, leaving the last two stitches. Now we're gonna do a decrease of two back loop half doubles. So yarn over, insert your hook into that second to last back loop, 
pull through and then into that last back loop there we go pull through for a total of four loops on our hook then yarn over pull through all four then to get started on our following row we're all going to chain two and flip since we're along the top we're going to start this row off with a decrease of two back loop half doubles because we do need to mirror the first underarm portion that we did so yarn over in that first stitch is back loop pull through next stitch is back loop pull through pull through all four then one back loop half double crochet into the rest of our stitches so our first two underarm rows are complete from here we're just going to continue to repeat these two underarm rows until we have the same amount of rows as the first underarm portion that we have right here so just as a refresher since we are along the bottom start the following row off with a decrease of three back loop half doubles one back loop half double crochet into every stitch and then into the last two stitches a decrease of two back loop half doubles and then the following row working down towards the bottom it's going to start with a decrease of two back loop half doubles and then one back loop half double into every stitch once we have the same amount of rows as this first underarm portion do a chain up of one and cut and then i will meet you back we are back the entirety of our front panel is complete I now have a total width of 14 inches or 36 centimeters. I did do a chain up of one end cut right after my last row, and now we're gonna get started on the back panel. Now when it comes to doing the back panel, the underarm and the shoulder are gonna be done exactly the same way. So all we're gonna do is make the same chain that we made for the underarm for the front panel, do the same amount of increases for the same amount of rows. Then do the same exact shoulder portion, and then I will meet you back. So once we have the underarm and the shoulder finished up for the back panel, all we're going to do from here is the width of our back. So for every size, no matter what size we're making, we're all going to start by inserting our stitch marker into the fifth stitch from the top, and that's just to give us a few more stitches for the neckline when it comes to doing our hood. Once we have our stitch marker into place, since we should all be along the bottom, we're going to chain two, flip our work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch until we reach our stitch marker. Then for this portion of our back, we aren't going to be doing any increases or decreases along the top or along the bottom. So it should be the same amount of stitches per row for the same amount of rows that we have for our first neckline row all the way across to our last neckline row. Once we have the same amount of rows, I will meet you guys back just to talk you guys through how we're going to finish up with the rest of our back panel. So we are back. We have made our way all the way across with our neckline for the back panel. Then all we're going to do from here is basically the same shoulder and underarm that we did for the front panel. So I'm just going to get started on this with you. We all should have ended along the top. Now what we are all going to do, no matter what size, is start by making a chain 5. And we're all making a chain 5 because we all skipped a total of 5 stitches when we got started on our neckline. Then from here, we're just going to put one half double crochet into every chain. Then one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way down. Then our following row is going to start with a decrease of three back loop half doubles, one back loop half double crochet all the way back up. So basically it's going to be an exact repeat as our front panel's shoulder and underarm portion. Now if you guys need any reminders on how to do that, those timestamps will be linked in the description. But once when you have that all finished up, do a chain up of one and cut and then I'll meet you back. Alright, so we are back. I am all finished up with my back panel and now are ready to seam everything together. So let's now place our front panel on top of our back panel. We are now going to insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Now insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're just gonna single crochet working in through both the front and the back panel at the same time. So we're all gonna start by inserting our hook into that first stitch into the front panel first stitch into the back panel and single crochet again first stitch into the front panel first stitch into the back panel and single and that's it we're just going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into when we don't do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat on the other side so we are back seaming our sides now we're going to seam our shoulder so making sure that our work is still flipped wrong side out meaning the seams that we have for the sides are still along the outside we're now going to insert our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we are gonna be single crocheting into both the front and the back panel as well, but we're working into a bunch of side rows. So all we're gonna do is alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row that we have. 
So getting that started together is start by finding our first side row. This is mine right here within the front panel. Insert in through that top loop. Find the same side row within the back panel. This is mine. Insert in through that top loop. And we're going to single crochet once. Now finding our following side row within the front panel. Insert your hook in through that top loop. Find the second side row within the back panel. Insert your hook in through that top loop and single crochet once, but we're going to be putting one more single crochet into that same side row. So inserting into that same top loop within the front and back panel, it should be a little bit easier since everything should already be gathered. And single crochet for two single crochets into that same top loop. Let's do this once more. Our following side row is this one. Find that top loop and insert. Following side row within the back panel, insert into that top loop with just one single crochet. And then into our following side row, insert in through that top loop within the front, following side row within the back panel, top loop with one single crochet, and then into the same top loop for a second single crochet. Continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain of a one and cut and then repeat everything that we did here on the other side. Alright, so now that everything is all seamed up, we're ready to get started on the prep for our hood. So we're all going to start by making sure that our work is flipped right side out right side up and then we're all going to start by inserting our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our left shoulder seam working our way down towards the back so i've inserted my hook in through there now we're going to flip our work over to look at the back panel so that we show the front of our single crochet row now we're all going to pull through and do a chain up of one to secure and we're all going to start by working down towards the back panel first putting one single crochet into every stitch now since this is the back panel we should all have a total of five stitches available so just find that first available stitch and insert with one single crochet and then I will meet you back once we reach our first side row. Now we have reached our first side row. Working into the side rows we are still going to be alternating between one to two single crochets into every side row but we are now going to be starting with two single crochets and then one single crochet into the following row. So just finding that first side row find that top loop and insert with two single crochets. There's one and then there's two into our following side row just one single crochet into that top loop. We're going to continue alternating with our single crochets, making our way all the way up and then up our back panel as well. Then make your way down, putting one single crochet into every stitch within the front panel. Then I'll meet you back once we reach our first side row within the front panel. We've made our way down to our first side row within the front panel. Now working into the side rows, we are still going to be alternating between one to two single crochets into every side row, but starting with two single crochets. So just find that top loop within our next side row and insert with two singles. So there's one and into that same top loop with a second single and one single crochet into that following top loop. And we're all going to continue with this until we reach our middle side row. Now we've made our way all the way down to our middle row. Everyone's middle row should be a single crochet because the last single crochets that we did into our previous side row was two single crochets. So I'm just going to take my stitch marker out into that middle row, insert with just one single crochet, and don't forget to insert your stitch marker into the top of that stitch so we know where the middle is. Then from here, continue to work into our side rows, then single crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way up as well. Then slip stitch into that chain space. All right, so our first single crochet row is complete. Getting started on our second prep row for our hood, all we're going to do is chain one and working in the same direction that we we're working in for the previous row, so towards the back panel still, we're just going to be putting one back loop single crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way around. Once we reach our middle stitch marker within the front, be sure to insert your stitch marker into that same stitch, but I'll meet you back right after we finish this row, and don't forget to do a chain up of one and cut. So we are back. We have finished up our back loop single crochet row for our collar, and now we're about to get started on our hood. So first things first, we're going to make sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up, then we are all going to be inserting our stitch marker where we want the edge of our hood to be. Now this is completely up to you, you guys can have this higher up towards your collarbone or further down towards the base of your neck, up to you. I actually just inserted my stitch marker into the 12th stitch away from my middle stitch marker, but I did not count that middle stitch marker stitch, and I did that on both sides because we are going to need it to be even, and this is roughly around mid chest for me. Now what we're going to do from here is a prep row for the hood, and then we can get started on the texture. So we're all going to start by inserting our hook into our stitch marker stitch. 
Then we're going to grab our secondary color yarn and insert that onto our hook. We are going to pull through and do a chain up of one just to secure. And what we're going to do from here is a single crochet row, but we're also going to be doing an increase into every other row just to make sure that the hood is wide enough for our head. So we're all going to start by inserting our hook into that same stitch that our chain one is in or our stitch marker stitch, starting with just one single crochet. Now working our way up towards the back into that following stitch, we're going to do two single crochets into that same stitch. So there's one and then there's two. And that's it. We're just going to make our way all the way around to reach our following stitch marker stitch. Let's do this again. Into that following stitch, insert with one single. Into that following stitch, insert with two singles. So there's one and then there's two again. We're just going to continue on with this single crochet row until we reach our following stitch marker stitch. And a really quick tip, our following row is going to be a trinity stitch row. Now those stitches always need to end on an odd number of stitches. So once we reach our stitch marker stitch and if we end on an even number, go ahead and just add one extra single crochet into that last stitch and then I'll meet you back. Our single crochet row with our secondary color is complete. Now we're going to get started on our trinity stitch. So from where we're at, we're all going to chain one and flip our work. Now when it comes to doing our trinity stitch, one, we're always going to want to use a loose grip. And two, the first trinity stitch and the last trinity stitch are going to be done a little bit differently than all the ones in between. So let's get the first one started together. What we're all going to do is start by inserting our hook into that first stitch with just one single crochet to start off this first trinity stitch. Then from here, we're all going to insert our hook into the same stitch that our single crochet is worked into. So it will be occupied and pull through. And we should have two loops on our hook. Now we need a total of four loops on our hook. So we're going to insert our hook into that following stitch as well pull through for three, and then once more into that following stitch, pull through for four loops on our hook. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through all four, and then chain one to finish off our trinity stitch. And that is our first trinity stitch completed. Now let's get started on the second one. Like I said, the second one is going to be done a little bit differently than the first one. So we're going to start by inserting our hook into that same stitch that our last trinity stitch is worked into. So this one right here, it will be occupied. So we're going to insert, pull through, and again, we're gonna need four loops on our hook. So into that following stitch, insert, pull through, and then once more, insert, pull through for four loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through all four, and don't forget to chain one to close off this trinity stitch. Let's do this once more. Into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitch is worked into, we're gonna insert, pull through for two loops. Into that following stitch, pull through for three. Into that following stitch, pull through for four. Then yarn over, pull through all four, and chain one to complete that trinity stitch. Continue repeating this trinity stitch until we all have two stitches left. We are back and we should all have two stitches left. Now we're going to do our last trinity stitch. So how this one is going to work, it's going to start off the exact same as our previous ones. So inserting our hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into, pull through into that next stitch, pull through and then into that next stitch, which should be our last stitch, pull through for four loops on our hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all four. And for the last one only, instead of doing a chain one, we're going to single crochet into that same stitch that our last trinity stitch has worked into just to secure it all down. So into that last available stitch, insert with one single crochet. And now our first row is complete. Now from here, it's basically just going to be a repeat of this row until we get the height of the hood that we need. So I'm just going to get started on the following row with you. So chain one and flip. Now to do the first trinity stitch together, the first one is always going to start with a single crochet. Then insert your hook into that same stitch that our single crochet has worked into. We're going to insert pull through, next stitch, pull through, stitch after that, pull through for four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all four, and chain one to finish off this trinity stitch. To do the next one, start by inserting your hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into, so this one right here, pull through into that following stitch, pull through, following stitch, pull through for four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all four, and chain one to finish off this trinity stitch. Continue on with this until we all have two stitches left again. We have made our way down, leaving the last two stitches, 
And now we're going to do the last trinity stitch together. So again, we're going to start off the same way that we start off all of our other trinity stitches. So inserting our hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into, pull through, next stitch, pull through, next stitch, which should be the last stitch, pull through for four loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all four. And only for the last one, instead of closing off the row with a chain, into that last stitch, close off the row with a single crochet. Now just continue to repeat this row until we get the height of the hood that we need, so until it reaches the top of our head. And then I'll meet you guys back so we can seam it all together. Alright, so we are back with the height of our hood. I have a total of 38 rows, and my height is roughly 13 and a half inches or 34 centimeters. Now all we're going to have to do is seam it up. So let's all start by flipping our work wrong side out so that our seams can be along the inside. Then all we're going to do is insert our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back panel of the hood. Then we're going to pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And this is going to be another single crochet seam. So just start by inserting your hook into that first stitch into the front panel, into that next stitch into the back panel, and single crochet. And that's it. We're just going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. Do a chain up of one and cut, and then we can get started on the pocket. So getting started on the pocket, we are all going to start by making an odd number chain, the width that we're comfortable for our opening to be, so it needs to be at least a little bit wider than the width of our hand. So I've already measured mine out, I need roughly 5 inches or 13 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 19. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do our trinity stitch all the way down. So block off that last chain and do a chain 1, that chain 1 does not count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. Then we're going to do our first trinity stitch. So start by single crocheting into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook. Then our first trinity stitch is going to be done the same way that we've done all of our other first trinity stitches. Insert your hook into that same chain that our single crochet is in, pull through. Into that following chain, pull through, and chain right after that, pull through for four loops on our hook. Then yarn over and pull through all four loops, and chain one to complete. To do our second one, insert your hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into. So insert, pull through, next chain, pull through, and chain right after that, pull through for one, two, three, four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all four, chain one to finish off that trinity stitch. Now continue on with this trinity stitch until we all have two chains left. We've made our way down and we should all have two chains left. Now we're going to close off this trinity stitch the same way that we've been doing, but we also need to be doing an increase. So we're going to do our last trinity stitch per usual. So start by inserting your hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into. Pull through into that following stitch, which is the second to last. Pull through and then into that following stitch, which is the last. Pull through for four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all four. Then the same way that we would close off all of our last trinity stitches, one single crochet into that last stitch. But now that we have to do an increase, we're also going to do a half double and double crochet into that same last stitch. So yarn over into that same last stitch with a half double crochet. And then once more into that same last stitch with a double crochet. Now we should all have two more stitches than chains that we made and our row one is complete. Now our row two isn't going to have any increases or decreases, so just to get that started, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then do our regular trinity stitch row all the way down. Finish off the last trinity stitch with a single crochet, and then get started on the following trinity stitch, making our way all the way back up until we have two stitches left, so we can increase together just once more. Alright, we are at the end of our row three, we should all have two stitches left. Now we're just going to close off this row with our increase. So start off this last trinity stitch the same way that we've been doing it. So into that last stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into, pull through, next stitch, pull through, next stitch, pull through for three loops on our hook, then yarn over, for four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all four. Then we're going to single crochet into that last stitch, and also half double and double crochet. So half double, and also double crochet into that last stitch. And all we're going to do from here is continue to repeat our two previous rows until we get the increased portion that we need for our pocket. So let me just talk you guys through that. 
So to figure out the amount of rows that we're going to need to do for the increase portion of our pocket, we're all going to want to try on our piece. Then we're going to insert our stitch marker into the stitch where we want our pocket to sit once when it's on. So you can make this more narrow so that it's more towards the center of your body or if you would like for a really wide pocket, you can make it closer towards the side seams. I'd like for mine to be, I guess, regular hoodie width for a pocket. So I've actually inserted my stitch marker into the 10th row from my side seam and this is roughly three and a half inches or nine centimeters in. And make sure that you're inserting your stitch marker into an even numbered row from the side seam. And all we're going to do from here, from the bottom, I counted up the amount of chains that I made and then I inserted my stitch marker. So since I made a total of 19 chains, from here I counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 and inserted my stitch marker. Then all we're going to do is do our increase rows for the same amount of increase rows that we have here. So this is my first one right here. This is my second. You can see this cluster of increases right here. Third and fourth, this is my last cluster. And then this is where the blunt part of the bottom of my piece starts. So I will be doing a total of four rows of those increases that we just did together. And then I'll meet you guys back so we can get started on the width of our pocket. Alrighty, so we are back. I have just finished up the increase portion for my pocket. And if you guys would care to place the pocket over the panel right where it would roughly lay once when everything is seamed together. You guys can see that the increases should align pretty much the same as the increases for the bottom of our piece. But once we have this portion all finished up, we're then just going to do Trinity stitch rows with no increases and no decreases for the same amount of rows that we have until we reach our following decrease row on this side. So I'm just going to count mine out together with you guys. These are my increase rows. Here's one, two, three, four. Then from here all the way over here are going to be my blunt rows. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. As you guys can see, this is my decrease right over here. So I will be doing thirteen blunt rows with absolutely no increases and no decreases. Then I'll meet you guys back so we can finish up with our decrease rows for our pocket. Alrighty, so I am back. I have just finished up the blunt portion of my pocket. For those of you that have my numbers, I have a total of 17 rows, and now we're going to do the decrease side of our pocket, and then we'll be all finished. So we all should have ended along the bottom. The bottom is the end with the increases, so where this land is. So now from here, we're all going to chain two and flip our work. Now getting started on the first decrease row for our pocket, it's going to start with a decrease of three half double crochets. So we're all going to yarn over. Insert your hook into that first stitch, pull through, next stitch, pull through, and next stitch, pull through for one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then yarn over and pull through all five. That is our decrease of three half double crochets. Then we're going to do our trinity stitches all the way down. And this first one is going to be done a little bit differently. So we're going to treat this decrease of three half double crochets as if it were the single crochet that we would have done for every first trinity stitch. So pretending that this last stitch that our decrease of three was in is our single crochet, we're all going to start by inserting our hook into that last stitch, pull through, next stitch, pull through, next stitch, pull through for four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all four, chain one, and then from here, all of our trinity stitches is going to be normal. So make your way all the way down into that last stitch. It is going to be closed off with just one single crochet. Then our following row is not going to have any increases or decreases. So get your following row finished up all the way back down. And then I'll meet you back just to do one more decrease row together. So our first decrease row for our pocket is complete. Then our second row for our pocket is complete as well. That one didn't have any increases or decreases. Now we're just going to do the following decrease row together just to make sure we all have it down. So getting started on our decrease row, we're going to chain two and flip our work. And to do our decrease, start the row off with a decrease of three half doubles. So yarn over into that first stitch, pull through, next stitch, pull through, stitch after that, pull through for five loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all five, and then just to do the first trinity stitch together, we're all going to start by inserting our hook into the last stitch that our decrease of three was worked into. So into that stitch, we're going to insert, pull through, next stitch, pull through, stitch after that, pull through for four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all four, and chain one. Then continue on with our trinity stitch to complete the row. 
From here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows until we have the same amount of decreased rows that we started this pocket off with. And once we do, I'll meet you guys back. All right, so we are back. We are all finished with the entirety of our pocket. Now we're just going to single crochet along the bottom and the top. But since we all should have ended along the bottom, we're going to get started on that first. So let's all chain one and flip our work. All we're going to do is alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row, starting with one single crochet. So getting this started together, this is my first side row right here. I'm going to find that top loop and insert with just one single crochet. This is my following side row. I'm going to find that top loop and insert with two single crochets. So there's one and then there's two. Let's just do one more set of stitches together. This is my following side row. I'm going to find that top loop, insert with one single. This is my following side row insert with two singles. So there's one, there's two, and we're just going to continue doing this, making our way all the way down until we reach this corner over here. Once we do, do a chain up of one and cut. So we have just finished up single crocheting along the bottom of our pocket. Now we're going to single crochet with our secondary color yarn again along the top. Now it's going to be done pretty much the exact same way, so I'm going to let you guys have at it. Just insert your hook into the top corner stitch and then alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row. Alright, so now that the single crochet row along both the top and the bottom of our pocket is completed, we're now going to get started on connecting the bottom to our piece. So first thing we're going to do is insert our stitch markers into the side rows that our original stitch markers are in. So for those of you that have my numbers, I did insert my original stitch markers into the 10th row. So I'm just going to count out my 10th row and insert my stitch markers along the bottom of that row. Then we're just going to clean up the bottom. Once we reach our stitch marker, we're going to switch out to our secondary color yarn and then clean up the bottom and at the same time connect the pocket to the bottom of our piece. So we're all going to start by making sure that our work is slipped right side out, right side up. Then we're going to insert our hook into the side row that's nearest to our side seam, working towards the front panel. We are then going to insert our primary color yarn onto our hook. And then from here, just alternate between one to two single crochets until we are into the side row right before our stitch marker. So we're going to pull through and start with a chain one. And just to do the first set of side rows together, this is my first side row right here. So I'm going to find that top loop and insert with one single crochet. Now this is my following side row. I'm going to insert my hook into there with two single crochets. So there's one and then there's two. We're just going to continue this until we're worked into our side row right before our stitch marker. So now that I've just single crocheted my way over to my stitch marker, we're now going to introduce our secondary color yarn. So after that last single crochet, do a chain up of one and cut. Then all I'm going to do from here is insert my hook into the last single crochet that we just did. Then insert our secondary color yarn onto our hook and pull through. Then from here, we're going to sandwich our pocket and our front panel together. So we're all going to start by inserting our hook into that first available stitch into the pocket and then into that next side row within the front panel, which should be our stitch marker stitch. Now we are going to be continuing on with our stitch sequence that we did when we we're working down towards the side row. And the last stitch that we all should have done was one single crochet into that last side row. So now we're going to be putting two single crochets into the following side row and that's into the front panel. So we're going to insert our hook into that side row that our stitch marker was in with one single crochet. And since we need to be putting two single crochets into that side row, I'm going to be inserting my hook into that following stitch into the bottom of my pocket and then inserting it into the same side row within the back panel. Just like that. Now let's do the next set of rows together. This is my next available stitch right here and the next side row that we have should be just one single crochet into there. So I'm going to insert my hook into there within the front panel and then into that next side row within the back panel, insert with one single crochet. And just to do the next one, this is my next stitch within the pocket. I'm going to insert my hook into there, then two single crochets into the next side row. So this is my next side row right here. I'm going to find that top loop, insert with one single crochet and then into that next stitch into the pocket but worked into that same side row within the back panel because remember two single crochets need to be worked into there. And we're just going to continue this making our way all the way down. Our last stitch into the bottom of the pocket should be worked into our 
side row that we have our stitch marker in on this side. Then we're going to do a chain up of one and cut with our secondary color yarn and then connect our primary color yarn just like how we did on this side. And then from there, just continue to alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row, making our way all the way around now. And then once we've made our way all the way around, don't have any more side rows left to work into, do a chain up of one and cut. Alrighty, so we are back. The bottom of our pocket is now connected to our piece and it is not going anywhere. And now from here, all we're gonna do is just connect the top of our pocket to the piece as well. Now connecting the top of the pocket, I actually don't have any real rhyme or reason to it. I'm just gonna take my tapestry needle and just kind of weave my way in with my secondary color yarn so that there's not any discrepancies with the color, just all the way through until we reach our stitch marker to stitch marker. But since everything is connected, you guys can actually tell that the pocket that we have is a little bit taller than when we first placed our stitch marker. What we're gonna do is count up the next two available stitches and then place our stitch markers into there and that's going to be where everything's going to be connected. We're counting up the next two available stitches because of the single crochet row that we did along the top and along the bottom just to make sure that the pocket is flush when our hands aren't into it. So I'm just gonna take my stitch marker out and this is the stitch that it was into. And I'm gonna count up one, count up two, insert my stitch marker into there and then do the same thing on the other side as well and as you guys can see that looks a little bit better we can actually see our stitch markers now and now just go ahead and seam it in any which way you guys see fit and then i will meet you guys back so we are back our pocket is all seamed up and now we're just going to clean up the armhole so all we're going to do is make sure that the work is flipped right side out right side up and insert our hook into the side row that's nearest to our side seam and all we're going to do is alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row, then one single crochet into every stitch. We're going to make our way all the way around with that, then slip stitch into that chain space, and then repeat the same thing on the other side. And that's all going to be with our primary color yarn. All right, so we are back. Our single crochet row along our armholes are completed, and now we are all done. Last thing we're going to have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope you all enjoy the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch y'all the next one. Bye.